Welcome to Crick Express, yet another exciting episode and none other than uh, Tom Moody is here with us. Uh, Tom, it's a pleasure being here with you today. We've waited for this moment a long time and uh, congratulations for being in the finals of the first DP World ILT20. This is a new tournament, this is a new team, a new franchise mm -hmm. and you've been building it from the scratch. How exciting is it for you? Yeah, it's exciting for everyone. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of work, as you would be aware, behind the scenes in preparation uh, with with management. Firstly, building a management team, um, and then a support team, and then obviously we go through the process of you know building a squad, uh, both international squad and domestic squad. So it's been a long journey, and to think that you know we're at that end point today, um, you know, playing in a final, uh, it's a great achievement. You know, f you know, for everyone really. Yeah. that's been a part of that journey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, anything new that you've done? Uh, I mean, I, I know that you have a long experience of building teams, building squads. Anything different you've done this time? Well, obviously, this is a, a unique situation where, you know, the the ILT20 uh, here in um, the UAE is very new. So yeah. we, we're, you know, launching a new franchise tournament in, a, in an environment where cricket is still... Uh, developing, but there's no question there's a huge community uh, yeah. that love the game, play the game, um, and uh, and want to develop the game. So, you know, this is just the first stepping stone. And for us as a franchise to be involved in that uh, is, is quite unique. And we're very keen not only to be performing, you know, at the high performance level, which yeah. is the, uh, you know, the ILT20 and hopefully winning trophies, but we also want to be a part of the development of the game mm. uh, here in the community because there is a, there is certainly an appetite for um, the game and the growth of the game. And if yeah. we can play a small role, that's great. Tom, a day in your life as a director of cricket, we know you've had tons of experience. You don't want to talk about that, but PSL, IPL, mm. CPL, Sri Lanka, all of that. Mm. Uh, as a director of cricket here at Desert Vipers, how is how, what does your day entail? I know you've got a team of coaches that you need to handle alongside a team of players as well. Tell us a little bit about that and give us a sneak peek into your day in Desert Vipers. Yeah, well, I can give you a sneak peek in my last 24 hours and that, that involved... Uh, you know, discussions with coaches prior to training yesterday, our last training uh, prior to um, our final today. Uh, in the evening uh, with the owners, uh, I had a, uh, a dinner with the head of uh, the host broadcaster uh, of the uh, DP World um, ILT20. Um, and again, that was uh, exercise of building relationships and understanding the you know you know what's, what's happened with regards to the broadcasting of this first year and also you know giving our owners some uh, you know further insight to the to the game and how how that dynamic works uh, this morning up early um, myself and the CEO with one of the owners went out to the the various communities where cricket's being played mm -hmm. Uh, in all the you know open spaces where you know makeshift cement wickets yeah, um, yes. have been prepared, uh, you know teams from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, you know wherever come together and play, uh, you know on the weekends. Yes. So we we went out there with a car load of uh, fan jerseys, uh, nice. hats, uh, tickets. Um, to engage them to you know be part of the journey with us so wow. hopefully building a fan base and yes. you know a number of those uh, hundreds of you know people that we engaged with this morning with this we did the same yesterday morning at different locations you know we're hoping are going to be there today you know filling the stands and and you'll see them with the red fan jerseys on and hopefully supporting us so it's again building relationships, connecting with the people that actually are playing the game of cricket here in the UAE um, and, uh, you know, building a fan base and hopefully that's just the beginning of something big for us. Yes, absolutely. Um, talking about fan base, I think Desert Vipers has uh, been yeah. doing it, doing it, I would say, and I can take the liberty of saying, has been doing it much better and much louder than everybody else and we've seen that because we've been in the stadium as well and we've seen mm how it's uh, panning out and also 
building the local community and building cricket in this country, as you said earlier. Mm. Uh, you've seen players from the local UAE side as well, playing in your team and playing in other teams as well. Uh, do you like what you see in the local talent? Uh, and I'm sure there is always a room for improvement and many new things can happen and big things can happen to them. But, but early signs, do you see what you, do you like what you see? Yeah, I do like what I see. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I've, I, I was a little bit disappointed with the process with regards to how the domestic, domestic players were allocated to oh. the franchises. Uh, <coughs> you know, we originally agreed that there'd be a draft process, which okay. would have been a, a, a fair process, but it just appears to me uh, and many people that have got a, a sharp eye for the game that probably not the best players have been represented on the playing field over, mm. over the tournament. And to me, that's disappointing because this is a local tournament yeah. and, and it's about developing local talent. And if you haven't got your best 12 players, because only two players can play in the playing 11, yeah. uh, playing regularly, it's a missed opportunity. Yes. Um, so I think that firstly is a point that uh, that needs to be addressed moving forward. Um, and, and certainly the glimpses I've seen of other teams, uh, players that have played, there's no question there's some talent here. Okay. But you know it's difficult for me to answer the question because I haven't seen all of the talent on, on yeah. display. They've been yes. sitting in the dugout, unfortunately. From our perspective, uh, you know, someone like a, a Rohan Mustafa has been brilliant yes. you know both on and off the field he's been a, a great asset to us he's a he's a great guy uh, brings really good energy to the group and he's slotted in just perfectly he's a you know yes. three-dimensional cricketer that you know can hold his home hold his own in this um in this company yeah. and that's a credit to him and it's a credit to uh, the uae that uh, you know a player like him is a part of you know their their setup uh, another young player that we have, um, Ali Nassa, is, is another really exciting talent. Mm. Um, you know, again, he's at the beginning of his journey yeah. and uh, just the work he's done uh, behind the scenes at training with uh, Azam Mood with, with regards to his bowling and, and with Neil McKenzie developing his batting. You can, you can see the acceleration of his game just in mm. this short window. So that's the benefit of, yeah. of you know, the exposure of these young players to yeah. these environments. So, yeah, that's just to speak a couple of, a couple of players in, in, you know, our, uh, under our sort of guidance. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there is wonderful opportunity, as we've seen historically with franchise tournaments, mm. uh, for the talent, local talent, to latch on to, um, you know, good professional habits uh, and taking advantage of playing alongside, you know, world-class yeah. players and also exactly. working alongside world-class coaches. <coughs> Deep World IL T20, Tom, we know that it's just the first season and it's going to get better. A lot of franchise cricket happening all around the world. Do you think this is the way forward in terms of uh, cricket as we perceive and as we see as a spectator sport? Do you think bilateral series have their own space or you, or you think they can both coexist at the same time? I think they can coexist, but I think what we'll find uh, in time that tournaments like this and other established tournaments will, <coughs> will not move and mm. that will be just part of the cricketing landscape. What we will probably see is, you know, the, you know, the, the days where you have a five test series, um, and huge chunks of the international calendar taken up with, um, you know, bilateral series uh, sort of reduced. There'll be smaller windows for that. Mm. And I think it's important that we still recognise that as a really important part of our global game because at the end of the day, these franchises need talent from every country in the world. And right. the only way you can develop that country is to have a good infrastructure within that country mm. developing that talent. Um, so, you know, I think a, a fine balance needs to be, be created where you have that ongoing uh, relationship with uh, test cricket and 50 over cricket. Um, I don't really see uh, any space for international T20 cricket apart from World Cups. Mm. Um, Interesting. And, um, you know, we, 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 we recognise that the... The natural forces of what's happening with franchise cricket is going to continue, uh, but I think it's important. I see the ICC also recognise that, 
you know what's what are the what are the ones that have purpose and me and have you know the right infrastructure behind them against the others that sort of come and go mm. so having sort of you know having a, a very clear and strong criteria of who um, and where are these tournaments being played all right um okay so last question from my side and then i'll oh, leave oh, yeah. for for the for the final question uh, when you do a team for a T20, like for Desert Vipers, a combination, so mm -hmm. to speak, on a broad level, there cannot be a perfect combination which fits every venue and every wicket and every condition. But on a broad level, what would be an ideal combination, a, a winning combination for a team? Because, uh, you know, some people say you must have a right arm leg spinner or you must have a wrist spinner mm -hmm. in the main 11. So according to you, is there, is there a formula or even if it's a broad formula for a combination in a T20 game? I think uh, you obviously you want a, a blend of of you know options that, that suit different oppositions and different conditions. So you know whether that's left arm spin, right arm spin, leg spin, left hand bat, right hand bat, top yes. order, yes. middle order. But I think from a general perspective, I think there's three important important maybe more than three, but I'll give you a, a few of them. I think one you need mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, in that we've got Winindu Hasaranga, so you mm -hmm. need yeah. you know that type of mystery, and you've got others like Narayan, and you've got Rashid Khan. So you mm -hmm. need to have mystery. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to have impact players. You know, with the bat, you need players that uh, have a high uh, percentage uh, of boundary hitting ability. So you mm -hmm. need impact players, and you need ball speed. Okay. Um, you need bowlers that can bowl 140 plus. Mm. Um, so those three criteria are really important. And on top of that, you need um, either uh, one uh, pace all rounder and one spin all rounder because that then creates balance. So yeah. when you're selecting a side, it enables you to have that sixth bowling option, gives you depth to your yes. bowling, plus it gives you depth to your batting. So all those different things are main considerations and yes. overarching. One thing that I think is really important is looking at character. You know, it's imp it's important that you 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 know you look at your options and you bring in people that have got strong character yeah. that will add to the culture of the of the group that you're trying to create. Excellent. That's nice. very very useful. I know that's that's <laughs> something that we've never seen it in in a different light. So I think that is really very interesting, yeah. Tom. Uh, Desert Vipers. It, last twenty, I don't know, almost a month now. Your journey, what do you think about it? Because we are just at the cusp of mm. the big finals. Uh, if you had to read into the last one month, can you tell us a little uh, bit about that? I think it's been an exciting journey. Uh, you know, it, it, there's nothing more um, rewarding, whether you're coaching or you're director of cricket or you play any role in an organisation. When you're starting fresh, uh, you know, you're meeting new people, you're yeah. meeting, you're creating new environments, um, and you're all in it together and we've managed to, as a group, both the off-field team and the on-field team have that collaborative approach and, and uh, there's, there's been real synergy in what we've been trying to achieve. Yeah. We've had tremendous support from uh, our owners with regards to you know, putting things in place and, and allowing uh, us as the so-called experts in our particular fields to to, uh, to do what's required to make sure that, uh, that we're well prepared um, and that we've got that trust in relationships, which I think is really important. Yeah, absolutely. That's very important. And I must add in the end that the name Desert Wipers is a very different, distinct name. And it kind of, and I was talking off here to Shoaib and a couple of other commentator friends, that it kind of sets the team apart from the rest of the crowd because it's an interesting name and I think it's, and even the the way the team is on the field and off the field is is distinct. So mm. so which is you know and it's it's a very honest comment from mm. my observation. And I think a lot of credit to you and and to your staff and the, to to the mm. team uh, for making it happen. And thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure. Uh, and please uh, for our viewers uh, continue to like, comment, and share. Crick Express will continue to bring more cricket updates and discussions. Thank you.